So what's the best treatment for myopia? And again, the answer is it depends. For younger patients, clear crystalline lens, good accommodation, no presbyopia, so they've got that lovely range of focus. We want to leave their own lens alone. And we've got two options to look at, either corneal laser eye surgery or intraocular lens implantation, intraocular contact lens implantation, ICL. Both great options. Our go-to tends to be, my go-to tends to be corneal laser eye surgery for a whole host of reasons. Very accurate, very gentle, incredibly safe. We're outside the eye, really. Um, such a great track record. It's a great option. Um, in fact, we've got a choice now. We have LASIK laser eye surgery and SMILE keyhole laser eye surgery. And I have access to that because I have the Zeiss Visumax, which is unique amongst femtosecond laser platforms in being able to deliver that treatment. So the femtosecond laser is the laser we use to create the flap in LASIK. And the advantage of the Zeiss Visumax is that it's so accurate, it can create the lens required to treat the short-sightedness within the cornea so that I can then remove it through a keyhole incision without making a flap. Which has advantage in terms of leaving the eye a little bit stronger, a little bit of quicker recovery from dry eye symptoms, and allows, a, allows us to treat slightly thinner corneas as well. Um, it also means that the Zeiss Visiomax creates incredibly accurate, really safe flaps for LASIK, which is still an excellent option. So for younger patients, SMILE and LASIK are my go-to options. For my older group of patients who are getting signs and symptoms of presbyopia, so presbyopia is where they're losing that ability to shift focus from distance to near and back out again. I want to do something more for them where I'm giving them more of a range of focus. And if the lens inside the eye is in good condition and is not showing signs of cataract, it's just rigid, so it's lost that flexibility, then I want, I want to leave that lens alone and where possible use Presbyond blended vision LASIK laser eye surgery to share the light out across distance and near across the two eyes, blended so that both eyes provide a good overlap at intermediate distance and provide a good range of focus. So they work together really well. If the eye is showing signs of cataract, then, then really we want to be having a discussion with the patient about whether or not to bring their cataract surgery forward. These patients need particular care and att uh, attention in the assessment. And the reason is because of the small risks that are involved with lens replacement surgery. So the three things that I lose sleep over are infection inside the eye. Well, we've worked very hard to bring that down to a risk of about one in 10,000 for lens replacement surgery. So that's incredibly rare. And most of those patients, if they develop an infection, we can turn it around for them and, and they'll, they'll recover well. Swelling at the back of the eye, about one in a hundred patients, so it's quite common, but thankfully, a bit of time, extra eye drops, and we can settle it down. The patient does very well. So it's an annoyance, and we'd like people to just see brilliantly straight away and not have any bumps in the road, but at least it's manageable. And I've never had a patient where we can eventually get that fluid dried up for them and the, vi and the vision performing. The final issue is a condition called retinal detachment, which can occur in people who've, had never had, who've never had any kind of eye surgery. It is much more common in people who are short-sighted. So eyes that are short-sighted are larger than average, and it appears that that enlargement slightly weakens the retina, especially around the edge, around the periphery. And that appears to predispose these eyes to be more likely to develop this condition called retinal detachment, which is treatable. But it may be that performing lens exchange, cataract surgery, can trigger a retinal detachment in patients who are at risk. So the careful assessment required is if a short-sighted patient has a clear lens of their own, and particularly if they show signs of slight weakness in the retina, then I'll leave their lens alone. I'm not going to consider them for lens replacement. And absolutely, we're very fortunate to have access that I can perform Presbyon blended vision LASIK for them. 
and, and leave the inside of their eye alone. Conversely, if they have cataract, they need cataract surgery. And, 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 and there's really no point doing cornea, presbyter and LASIK, working on the cornea at the front of the eye because they're going to need cataract surgery. And so uh, we just have to look after them, do really nice cataract surgery, really safely and accurately and get the very best outcome we can for them. And there are tests we can undertake at the Custom Vision Clinic to, to manage that risk preoperatively as well, to identify patients who need extra care and follow up following surgery. So in answer to the question, what's the best treatment for short-sightedness, you need access to all of those technologies because they all have a role depending on the age of the patient and the condition of the inside of the eye, particularly the condition of their own crystalline lens.